Hi, everybody, and welcome to So What Happens Next, a show where we try to guess what happens in a movie, watch the movie, see what we got right, see what we got wrong, and maybe have a really interesting conversation in between. As always, I am one of your hosts, Thomas. I'm Amber. And this week, we're diving right back into the scary stories. It's The Evil Dead, the original one from 1981. Just, I feel like we're just on such a horror kick lately. I Aside know. From like yeah, one or two be. out of the way, but I mean, come on, we had that like bump with Willow, and then it's like, okay, we're back into it. Like, let's do this <laughs> thing. So we're actually going to do all the Evil Dead movies. So not only is this going to be yet another horror movie in our repertoire, but it is also going to be our first sort of marathon series. So we really hope you guys will join us and maybe even give these movies a revisit with us because we have I've seen the third one a long time ago and no one was really paying attention to it I remember it being batshit fucking crazy mm. I've never seen the first two I've never even seen the new I, everyone tells me that new show Ash vs. Evil Dead is really really good so to be honest I'm kind of like I kind of want to watch these though before I start going into it but speaking of going into things Amber, let's dive right into this movie. What do we think this is going to be about? I got five things on the board as usual, and for you guys listening at home, that is, it takes place in a cabin in the woods. It involves five friends. It's directed by Sam Raimi, the director of the early 2000s Spider-Man movies, obviously the best ones, the ones with Tobey Maguire. <laughs> Fight me. I don't give a crap about this Tom Holland <laughs> guy. The movie was filmed in, and I assume, takes place in the 80s, and it is also rated NC-17. Amber, have you ever seen an NC-17 movie before? I probably have, but I can't think of one. I don't think I ever (laughs) have. I feel like NC-17 was a thing. What's an NC-17 like? no child under 17. I know, but like, what films would that... It's based... Oh, I guess this movie, but it's basically movies where... You know how, like, if you're 16, or even 12... Yeah. And, like... Your parents were like, oh, let's take you to a rated R movie. Like, you could do it. You just have to be with them. Oh, okay. This is like, you can't come in. Oh, like, okay. Like, your parents can that. come in, but you are not allowed in this movie. And I'm so, trying to think of a film where they were like, NC-17. Because obviously it's only like, it's not that many. Yeah, so uh, the way I understand is a lot of uh, studios don't like using, don't like letting their movies go to that rating simply because it means nobody, un- there's a huge amount of people that won't see it. Yeah. Don't quote me on it, but I want to say. I feel like it's restricted to horror movies. Well, don't quote me on it, but it sounds like Deadpool's first cut might have been NC-17. There's okay. a few movies that have come out. I heard that, and I actually think a movie called Law Abiding Citizen Okay. Um, starring Jamie Foxx and Gerard Butler. It's a steaming pile of trash, but it's pretty violent. Like, mm-hmm. in a really weird, you wouldn't expect this movie to be violent, violent way. Okay. But um, stuff like that, or like Saw, I'm sure the first cuts oh, of Saw yeah, were Saw, like yeah. NC-17, and they were like, mm, yeah. let's bump it down to R, let's take some of this shit or out. Or like the human centipede. Yeah, exactly. Stuff like that. You know, I don't know if you remember, but like back in the early 2000s, they were doing the, like, a movie comes out, and then you can get the unrated version. Oh, yeah. I feel like the unrated version is the the NC-17 one okay. would have been if they let it get rated kind of type of thing. So yeah. there's that. But anyway, those are the five things up on the board. So, Amber, what do you think the, the Evil Dead is about? Well, what what makes an Evil Dead differ from just dead? Well, you could be, like, Jesus was dead. He wasn't evil, right? That's true. Okay, so now that we've clarified that, <laughs> you're you either are either Jesus, Jesus dead as the dead person, or, or <laughs> you're evil. The dead. evil dead. Yeah. <laughs> well, oh, when you Gandalf, said Cap- Gandalf died and came back, and he was not evil at all. That's true. So I guess there is like an evil dead. Yeah. 
or the evil dead. I'm kind of curious if the evil dead is a thing. Yeah. But <laughs> I'm thinking since it's Cabin in the Woods. Mm-hmm. So, you know, a bunch of teenagers for spring break, they are all like, oh, let's use my uncle's brother's sister's cousin's cabin. You know, I'm roommate little... twice yeah. removed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what does that make you to him? Absolutely nothing. <laughs> <laughs> let's use their cabin for spring break or for the summer yeah. and, you know, kind of fool around and maybe mm. hook up with Jenny or, you know. Some... Oh, they're totally having like bland as shit white people names like yes. Jenny Tommy, Chad, or, Chad yeah. is probably one of them. <laughs> Maybe a Toby. And then some like you and have some Jessica. kid that's probably the nerd, and nobody wanted to invite him. But or like the main he's character, somebody's brother, right? Like, he's someone's. Hot. He's yeah. Chad's younger brother, Ted. Yeah, or something. <laughs> There's a lot of T names. Let's dump Ted. Let's call him Billy. He's yeah. Billy. That's easy as hell. And 80s. I'll... There's so many Billies. He's the nerdy, you're saying he's like the nerdy kid that kind of just like, my mom made me take him. Yeah. And he's the one who's going to figure out all the shit? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. And they all decide to go. Um, unbeknownst to them, there is... Nice word usage. I know, right? <laughs> I'm on a roll. <laughs> but the cabin is located on an old Indian cemetery. Oh, <laughs> shit. shit. Okay. Like that. And that's how it always goes. And, um, unbeknownst to the friends, yeah. the cabin was built on an unmarked, and it's Indian like a full crop. moon. And oh, so there's a lot every of mystical shit happening. 100 years or something, okay. it lands every on this, 100 years, 100 years. Okay, yeah, it lands on this like full moon that's orange or pink or some shit. <laughs> and Evil Dead rises. <laughs> okay, so you get a pink moon every 100 years. This Indian burial grounds, Evil Dead returns. To exact vengeance on the... Why? I guess, what's the driving force? Is this just, like, the dead return because Maybe they feel like it? Or is it because of the... STDs or something. The fuck are you talking <laughs> <laughs> Okay, fine. Whatever. It's the 80s. We're dealing with this. That's no, it's just... Uh, I feel like they just all head to a cabin, and then for some unknown reason, there's just a bunch of, like, dead bodies in the ground. They all come up. Yeah, like like maybe because they're doing like a Ouija board thing, or they summon them accidentally. Oh, yeah. okay. So they're dicking around with something, and yeah. it brings forth the evil dead. Yeah. Or a bunch of. Or evil if dead it's people. like Cabin in the Woods, which if you ever seen that, I have really not. Good... I have not seen it. Every, okay. It's another movie. You know, say put a pin in it. We'll do it because okay. it's one of those ones where everybody tells me, "Oh my god, you have to see it." And I was like, it looked like kind of a shitty horror movie, and everybody's like, "It is a shitty horror yeah. movie, but it's so fucking funny." Yeah. And I'm like, okay, well. Sure. So, not, well, I don't want to go over Cabin in the Woods to ruin it for yeah, you. Yeah, appreciate but, it. But, like, Saw, there could be, like, a big mastermind behind that. Oh, like, so. Like, fucking with these kids, So, basically. there's, like, a, but do you mean mastermind, like, are we talking, like, a necromancer kind of guy? Are we talking, like, an well, enthusiast? Well, it have to be, right? Well, no, 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 because it could be, dead? think of uh, Scooby-Doo and the Witch's Curse. You have Tim Curry's characters, just, like, I am an author who has this weird ulterior motive and is opposed and is like, I'm a warlock man, as opposed to like, I am a weird necromancer that lives <laughs> in the true. woods it's and wants these kids to full yeah. sacrifice. <laughs> yeah, something like that. Yeah. So, I mean, I don't know which way you were going with it, but. Yeah, it could be, I don't know, like Evil Dead. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to, I'm going to throw back to what I thought Candyman was about. And say this movie's doing what I thought Candyman would do, where you mm-hmm. have the five hunky teens yeah. in the woods. Um, they're totally teens, though. They're not grad students in this movie. Not a chance in hell. <laughs> so you got, like, these five teens, probably senior year high school. Yeah, spring break. Totally right, Amber. Uh, since it's, like, Sam Raimi directing it, I think it's going to be, like, that cheesy kind of campy style. Because, like, if you think about, like, Spider-Man, like, that was such a comic book movie. Yeah. Like, it's as if you just plastered a comic book on the screen. Yeah. And it played that way, and it was great, and it played right. And I think this is going to be, like, a horror comic book. Yeah. It's going to have that kind of campy style, but it's also, since it's NC-17, I think we're going to be getting everything from straight-up sex to just 
gory as hell kills. Like, I think we are going to be delightfully surprised by the kills in this movie. I think they're going to be <laughs> gory as shit. Uh, it's the 80s. It's going to be that bright red, fake as hell blood, too. Like, yeah. I'm sure we'll watch it and we'll be like, is this really what NC-17 was? Because the movie's like Saw and yeah. stuff that come out. It's so bad. Um, But yeah, I think I'm thinking that the Evil Dead is like a... It's a thing. Like, it's like a monolithic thing. Okay. So I don't think it's a bunch of just evil zombies or something. I think it's like there is an evil dead. And I think that this whole night is caused by whatever, pick one of the things you said, the pink moon or the hundred <laughs> years or both or whatever. And I think it's everything building up over the course of the night where by the time it hits midnight or 3 a.m. or something, we get like the evil dead will rise and yeah. the five friends have to stop it. Or something, and like, yeah. or, or or else the world will end, or some shit. I don't know. I gotta disagree though on the uh, they are dicking around and summon them though. I think they're just victims of circumstance. I think oh, that I'm... they're in the woods that this evil thing happens to be occurring in, and they're just like, oh no, what's happening? And mm-hmm. it's just, there you go. But if you guys give us just one quick second, we're gonna watch the trailer for this movie, and then we'll let you know some final thoughts before we dive into the Evil Dead. <laughs> Okay, so that, interesting. It's like people who become possessed and then they die. Yeah, it looks like you read a book and you become the evil dead. Yeah, you just look at pictures of demons, basically. I am concerned about the... the only way to get rid of it is body dismemberment. Bodily dismemberment. (laughs) Yeah, I'm more concerned about the bodily fluids that are being thrown around in this movie because it's like, look at all this blood and questionable white fluid being sprayed everywhere. It's NC-17, so literally anything can happen. (laughs) So, any last quick thoughts to add to that before we dive into the evil dead? Uh Oh. (laughs) <laughs> that sounds was, like right enough it was yeah. very confusing at first i was like is this the movie like yeah that voice over it it does not look like it looks like there's two teens and, and then you five. have like cackling going on and yeah that was uncomfortably long yeah <laughs> it was like she just has her mouth open and like another woman is talking um just seems like why not just have her talk yeah but I don't know. I'm thinking that this is going to be just campy as shit based on that trailer. I mean, oof, that... Yeah, that wasn't looked the be- very I'm kinda, campy. There I'm, was only, like, one person in there, too, and I was like... Yeah, you see, like, Bruce Campbell versus the Evil Dead, and I'm like, I thought there was, like, five teenagers in this or something. What the hell's going on? They're I'm, already dead. They got oh, there. They were they all, oh, so like, that's, like, the beginning. <laughs> yeah. I'm actually just kind of curious how... And we'll get into it. In the latter half of the episode, I'm kind of curious if this movie was like maybe a passion project by Sam Raimi or something like that. Because this looks really low budget. Yeah, um, it does. So I'm kind of curious. Maybe it looks he made like this. somebody just videotaped like. Yeah, with a like an at house. home yeah. cam corner. Cam quarter. Yes. Quarter. Whatever. Fuck it. Those <laughs> things you record video with, with film. Those. Look like that. Yeah, because as they were like, it was like they were walking with them into right. the house. And, and it was like, like the oh FPS is all gosh. kind of funky and stuff's moving really fluidly. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, this is the weird. The early years of paranormal activity and such. <laughs> <laughs> but that's our thoughts on what we think this movie's about. And after watching the trailer, maybe it changes a little bit. There seems to be a book involved. So join us as we now dive into 1981's The Evil Dead. It'll be a few um, seconds for you, and it'll be about an hour and 25 minutes. Shocking. This isn't even 90 minutes long. Nice. This is like a short guy. This is shorter than Disney. Yeah. Thank fucking Christ. Getting (laughs) Getting tired of these two and a half hour movies. But join us as we now dive into The Evil Dead. different than I thought it would be. Yeah, especially watching the trailer, which didn't show very much, I guess. 
And yeah. it kind of looked like a completely different movie, honestly. Yeah, I was kind of surprised that, like, I don't know, I guess I just didn't know what it would be. So I was kind of surprised to see what we saw. Like, I thought it was going to be kind of a proto-scream thing, you know, like a bunch of teens go out somewhere they're, you know, not supposed to or whatever. Maybe mm-hmm. not scream, but something that had that kind of element, right? Like the Friday the 13th sort of deal. Yeah. Like you said, I thought it would be, it was definitely campy, but especially at the beginning when they all kind of, you know, go to this cabin, they're driving yeah. to the cabin, um, especially with the music playing and it's say, a little foggy uh, outside. I don't know. Like, let's talk about that beginning real quick. Okay. I mean, first thing I wrote down was get a fucking radio. Like, was this a common <laughs> thing in the eighties? Oh, just yeah, not having just a damn singing, radio? Like, yeah. and I'm just like... Do you not have a radio? Like, or what are you doing? Just, yeah. Why Why are you singing in this car? It just seemed awkward as shit yeah, to me. Yeah, it'd be more believable, I guess, if it was like a family and they're going to this cabin. Because right. you know how families are like, oh, yeah. let's sing together. Shall we but come around this was mountain. like a group yeah. of teenagers. like Right. And they're singing something <laughs> I didn't recognize what yeah, that was. I it didn't was know just what it something. was either. But that whole part... It like totally reminded me of like The Shining or like movies like that where it's just kind of like that mysterious like yeah. yeah you're on like your trip to somewhere spooky or something like yes. that but this wasn't anything like that at all they were just kind of like oh yeah like we're gonna go to this place and like do this thing we're gonna go camping I guess in a cabin that he rented yeah. from someone which yeah. I and feel he got like, it for, like cheap <laughs> yeah and I'm like okay but who also who's the mysterious like like super of this building. Like, I don't understand who rented this to him. Is it a evil fellow, like trying to trap him, Mm -hmm. Or is it just some dude who owns the cabin? I mean, like what happened? Another thing too is like, what? Okay. So let's get into this movie. Let's just jump in. Yeah. So the plot of this movie ended up being instead of a native American burial ground, it was a, like this, it sounded like an archaeologist found some sort of Sumerian city or tomb or something called Camaria or whatever. And for some reason went into the Tennessee mountains to study a book he found. It was a little confused. He's like, I found this book that's made out of like human flesh and written in blood. Yeah. He, I guess, brings it back to the middle of nowhere to research it with his wife. Yeah. And he records this whole thing and, you know, says if anybody read like people that are consumed by the book or something like that's pretty much what you hear in the trailer the over the 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 voiceover is what they read in the or what they hear in the recording that just kind of explains the movie and it's like once you dick around with this book the evil dead will come after you which i guess is like sumerian evil spirits or something like yeah that. they don't really like they like well, lay the groundwork but they don't do like, anything with it i, I mean I think it's like demons and like they're yeah, demons yeah. in their like religion. Right. Yeah. Because I was looking at like, if you look at the book when they're flipping through that, that is like some funky looking cuneiform script. So I guess it would make sense. Yeah. And like then Sumerian. even the drawings, I was like, wow, that looks a lot like drawings that, you know, like in American history, well, like, like, yeah. And the funny thing is <laughs> the funniest part to me is like, Sumer like Bible. And <laughs> well, the funniest part to me is like Sumer is, and this is where I'm going to like use my, college education here um <laughs> sumer's in the middle east not tennessee yeah. and so it's like he finds this book which is not a thing as far as i'm aware they don't they weren't writing books in sumer that is like on paper and bound in human skin and all this other shit i'm like i don't that wasn't a thing back then so historical like inaccuracies aside this book looks like he i would have believed it more if this archaeologist fellow was going crazy and he wrote the book. Yeah. And he wrote it in like, like if Santa, it was his journal Jackie and Neuform. he was just, you know, writing. And then slowly he's losing it and then yeah. he bounds the book in like his wife's face or something like that. Yeah. Because there's clearly like a human face is the cover of this yeah. book. I mean, at first when she was drawing. <laughs> oh, it's also the Book of the Dead, which is the, apparently the original oh, yeah. title that Sam Raimi wanted to call this movie. And then the producers were like, no, we don't think kids will want to go. They don't think kids would want to go to a movie that was linked to a book. So they were basically like, 
oh, you want to call it the Book of the Dead? Books are boring. No one will go see whatever the fuck that is. We're calling it the Evil Dead. And it just sort of is like, the Book of the Dead would have made a little bit more sense. I mean, especially like Book of the Dead, Book of the Dead 2, or you call it Book of the Dead Volume 2, you know? Like, you could do some cool shit with that title work. But, yeah, so he calls it the Book of the Dead. And Ash is reading this book, I guess, like dicking around with the book. Yeah. I don't really, the book almost seems irrelevant until the end. Yeah, like they kind of ignore it up until the end when he's like, oh yeah, maybe I should destroy this. Yeah, the book kind of like leaves the movie for a while because they yeah. rely on like the recording of the guy reading the Sumerian text, which brings back the evil dead mm-hmm. spirits you're talking about. The demons, I guess, if we're going to go with Amber, what Amber said. And just like... Yeah, I don't... I would have... Oh man, let's get into the characters. Because, like, that's the, really the driving shit behind this. Is you got Scotty, who is, like, a douchebag bro-man. Like, the, <laughs> the guy friend. You got Ash... Well, Scotty actually pulls through. Scotty pulls through at the end, but in the beginning, he's a piece of shit. I mean, he if, yeah, if it wasn't true. for him, none of this would have happened. Yeah, you're right. He oh. did go snooping around. Exactly. So. You have... Yeah, so you have Scotty, who's played by Richard... Demanicore, Deman, <laughs> Demanicore. Uh, I don't know. He played it as Hal Delrich. I, I don't know what what's going on with that name. But yeah, you have him. You have Ashley Ash, uh, sort of the Ash from the Ash versus the Evil Dead movies. I guess he is going to continue on being a character in these. Uh, but played by the always funny Bruce Campbell. Uh, you have Ellen Sandweiss as Cheryl, Betsy Baker as Linda, and Teresa Tilly as Shelley. So right there you have this weird, odd number of people. Like, I mean, just the dynamic of these guys is so damn weird. Like, you have two clear couples. Like, Bruce uh, Bruce Campbell's character and Betsy Baker's character are clearly together. He gives her, like, a... This was weird. He gives her, like, a monocle? Yeah. What the fuck was this? Like, I, I don't understand. It's like, oh, a necklace. And I'm like... It looks kind of like a magnifying glass. I'm like, but there's only yeah. one, and it's tiny. Is that a monocle? <laughs> Did he get his girlfriend a monocle? I'm like, that's just so fucking weird. Yeah. And then uh, 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 Scotty's uh, girlfriend is uh, Shelly, and you just kind of have Cheryl just around. Uh, she just comes with them, and yeah, is kind like of... Yeah, she's like a third wheel. Fifth wheel, really. Oh, yeah. But it's just kind of like a... She's just there, like, moping the whole time about She this? is, and she's obviously an artist, I guess, so she's just yeah. kind of, like, drawing and, yeah. I would have loved it if her character had, like, maybe some kind of angle. So, like, you know, at the top of the episode, we were talking about, like, how we thought this cast was going to be, right? So we thought it was going to be, like, a bunch of teens, and then someone's, like, you know, nerdy brother comes with them or something like that, right? Yeah. That... Kind of didn't happen. You know, Bruce Campbell's sort of the one reading the book and stuff, but, like, Cheryl is sort of the angry, mopey, I guess, person. I would originally have thought nobody wanted there, but she's there. I kind of wish there was some sort of angle, like, oh, like, introduce everybody at a gas station or some shit. Yeah. And have, like, oh, this is Cheryl. She's some art major who's doing (laughs) something on landscape paintings or whatever, and she wants to come with us. She's a friend of Shelley's or whatever. Or maybe, like, Linda's or something, and, like, they just want to help her out. Have, like, Ash and especially Scotty be, like, super bummed out that, like, oh, man, our, like, weekend fuck fest in a cabin's ruined because Cheryl's here. Or like, is something it? like that. Oh, or is it? <laughs> um, but, yeah, so she's there, and I just, she, this movie hit the ground running. Yeah, like, the plot definitely... Right off the bat, because a lot of movies nowadays, they have this, like, slow drag. Yeah, we are taking our like, time with these yeah. movies today, which is Especially, like, bad. horror movies nowadays. Um, yeah, especially they have, with horror like, movies this whole, today. Because, probably because, like, from this movie, we didn't get a whole lot of background on any of yeah. the characters or, like, the book and things like yeah. that. Um, but overall, so who cares? I can understand, but yeah, but even this then, I was so like, campy. Well, it's like, wow, shit. Like, we, like, we're getting into it, right. like, they're Because straight off to... the bat, Cheryl, like, the clock stops, mm-hmm. and she starts going crazy as she's, like, sketching this clock. Yeah. And she draws what looks for, I guess, to date ourselves a little bit, or whatever you want to call it. This drawing looks like a shitty version of Doodle Bob from that SpongeBob <laughs> episode about the pencil. Yeah. And she just, like 
goes nuts and is like carving into her sketch pad and it's just doodle bob and all I could think is like fuck and then the uh, the basement door starts rattling and I think we were watching it the first thing I said was hey, <laughs> like comes from the basement this whole movie takes a different angle yeah um but yeah like it just it just started they like get to this creepiest shit cab- cabin everyone's like uh and scotty finds the keys above the door mm-hmm. opens the door and suddenly everyone's like okay this is fine like yeah. oh he got in we're cool yeah. and i'm like it's still creepy as fuck and in the middle of nowhere yeah and i mean they're still like that for pretty much the entire night up until cheryl decides to does she like just walk out into she the woods? no she's hearing voices remember so they oh, open that's right. they open the basement the basement door flings itself open mm-hmm. while they're eating dinner which is yeah. like a really like i don't know if you paid attention to this but like it was a very intricate dinner for yeah, just a bunch of people. Yeah, that's There's what like a I thought, too. I was like, where are you cooking? getting, like, these burgers and shit? Well, like, like, where are you making this food? Because <laughs> they didn't show a kitchen, I don't think, once yeah, in this movie. Yeah, and I almost didn't realize there were rooms in the back. I literally this thought This cabin it was just went on that. forever. It yeah. went on forever. Are you yeah. kidding? Like, they just... I, and it must have been a shooting thing. This movie apparently was shot, like, over the course of several years. Oh, okay. So, one of the things you, know, you can notice, which it hit me like a ton of breaks in the beginning of this movie is Bruce Campbell's fucking hair is like a bowl cut when they're in the car <laughs> on the way to the cabin. He's, yeah. It's like this ugly as hell thing. And it was just like, what the fuck is going on? Apparently, the amount of blood on people throughout this movie and their hair constantly changes because they filmed over several years and okay. just there's random things where like ash is completely covered in blood and then suddenly he's clean again in the next shot and just like this like lacking continuity that occurs in the film which i think lends itself to this movie's campy nature but yeah so cheryl's hearing voices and she freaks out after they find the book and this tape recording of this archaeologist's notes and the archaeologist just keeps reading the fucking words over and over again making the evil dead rise from the ground or dead or whatever she starts hearing voices she goes outside and goes way too far out in the woods in nothing but a bathrobe in my opinion like Mm -hmm. i don't know (laughs) i'd like maybe go out on the porch and be like who the fuck's there like leave us fucking alone i'm not going like a 10 minute walk into the woods in the middle of the night what the fuck is this but she goes out there and then probably one of the like most awkward parts of this whole movie. Now, this movie is rated NC-17, and it was rated NC-17 for blood, gore, and violence, of which it has no small amount of. I was, and I don't know about you, Amber, but I was kind of anticipating, like, oh, we're going to do, like, a lot of sex stuff probably in this movie because we can get away with it. But we don't. But we get this weird angle, or not this weird angle, this weird shot where she's, like, raped question mark by a tree yeah like like it penetrates her or like at least punches <laughs> her in the cervix yeah. it's weird and it's, i'm like oh like i could yeah, feel that like, <laughs> and i mean i don't know if this is the movie just having obviously a low budget or what but it was just like this vine just like hits her in the vagina and then it's just like but it's like she's clearly wearing shorts or underwear or something yeah and there's no tear there's no like I mean, obviously, you'd probably have to get way too into this movie to figure it out. I was just mm-hmm. like, huh, she's wearing underwear, and it doesn't look like anything's happening. But it was, like, really awkward, because up until that point, I thought she was just wearing a bathrobe. Yeah. And I was like, oh, fuck. Yeah, and then you got the nip slip going yeah, on Yeah, you there. got a lot of nipples in this movie. Yeah. <laughs> like, a weird... It's weird how they're just, like... We don't want you to, like, flash boobs or something. Like, you see this in, like, later movies. Like, yeah. I, I think we saw the newest Friday the 13th movie the other yeah, day. Oh, we my did. God. That, that's just, like, that's just a garbage piece of shit film. <laughs> but, um, in that, you know, you have that, like, early, or that 2000s aughts kind of, like, oh, yeah, show us your boobs. Yeah. Whereas this is, like, oh, whoops, the nipple came out. And then it's, like, you know it wasn't an accident. <laughs> and it's just, like, I, why, what is this movie? This can't be a shit. Cheryl makes it away from the evil vine. She's screaming. She wants to go home. So Ash is like, all right, fine. I'll take you home. The car won't. I loved this scene where the car's starting, not starting. Yeah. And she's like, it won't let us leave. And then the car starts and he just looks at her like, yeah. shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, that's a good chuckle. And then they're driving away. 
And for some reason, like, Cheryl gets out of the car, and I, I guess, was the bridge out? Was yeah, that what happened? Yeah, the bridge was totally destroyed. Okay, because I was like, the bridge is like, don't drive anything over three tons on this Yeah, bridge. but no, it looked like... It didn't even look like somebody went over that limit. It looked like it had just curled up. Right, because they go over the bridge in the beginning yeah. and like the wheel falls through mm-hmm. and they still make it on the other side. Yeah. And I'm like, is that car really over three tons? That's fucking huge. It's like a, just some kind of like Cadillac. Yeah, whoever it's not... constructed that bridge should be, you know. Or just should have maybe gone sued. no car traffic. Like, yeah. Because, I mean, I'll be honest, I don't know how yeah, much. Yeah, like a park in, like a human bridge. <laughs> yeah, like a footbridge. Because like, in yeah. my mind, I'm like, I honestly don't. Or a bike bridge. I honestly don't yeah. know how much our car weighs. Like, I could probably, like, give a roundabout answer. Maybe it's, I mean, I would say it's over a ton. But, yeah. like, I don't think, I mean, we drive, like, an SUV. I wouldn't think it's over three tons. So, like, theoretically, it can get across that bridge. But, um, yeah, so we're just kind of doing, Cheryl's freaking out. They get her back, and then she turns, doesn't she just, like, straight up turn into a monster or something like that? Yeah, she does. Like, she's over, she's just, like, hanging out in the corner or something, I yeah. think, and they're like, like And then she's like, ah, yeah, and makes and some then she evil turns demon around, voice. Yeah, and they're like, what's wrong? Oh, and then she's like, oh, that's just where the movie, like, the NC-17 rating just flips the switch and turns on because well <laughs> i mean i guess today like it'd probably still be a hard r but yeah. that's about it is she like fucking takes a pencil and starts trying to kill these people yeah, she like nails she's... uh like shelly or whatever in the ankle yeah. and they just sit on this grinding shot of her just like wiggling that pencil around in this ankle and i was like fuck i was just like this is this is like that absurd gory movie that you're like this is good because it's yeah. campy as shit it's one of the reasons I don't like Saw, or, or like especially like the movie Hostel. I don't know if yeah. you've ever seen that one, but it's just like, this is like super gory, and it's taking itself way too seriously. We need to dial that seriousness back, <laughs> make it like Evil Dead levels of it, and just like make it just shock horror the whole yeah. time. I don't fucking need this like serious avant-garde nonsense with like gore and shit. Just have her stabbing people with a pencil and make it nasty. Yeah. Well. But yeah, they lock her up in the fucking basement. Yeah. Um... And that's actually a point where I wanted to say something. I, was re- I thought, I don't know if you like were, were noticing. So one of our, our weird, not complaints when we first started watching the movie, but it was like, what the fuck's with this camera work? So we, <laughs> I think we kind of hit the nail on the head. Like this movie looks like it was filmed pretty low budget with maybe like a camera. I don't know if it's like a camcorder for time or whatever, but it doesn't look like it's filmed on like a super high quality movie camera of the time. Yeah. So you got shots like when they're pulling up to the cabin where it clearly looks like maybe someone's sitting on top of a truck yeah. with the camera just watching the car and they're hitting, the camera's hitting leaves and twigs and shit as yeah. they're going. So like they didn't clear it out before they did the shot or anything. Fine, whatever. A budget's a budget. I'm not going to say, like Sam Raimi's not a bad director. He did fucking Spider-Man and shit like that. And this movie, which I... If you can't tell already, I enjoyed for how horrible, like, everything was in it. But, it was, like, you get a lot of... What I started noticing halfway through was you get a lot of, like, really cool ideas for shots or, like, concepts of shots. It's just you don't have the equipment to execute it as great as you could. Yeah. Which I think says a lot for, like, the cinematographer behind this movie and for Sam Raimi as a director. Because, like, one of the coolest shots is... um they lock Cheryl up in the basement and she's like taunting everybody. Mm -hmm. And the whole shot is like POV from her point. It's her POV, but it's from under the basement door and it's going between each character as they're talking. And I'm like, this is actually kind of cool. Like you don't see things like that too much. And I was like, clearly this probably was to maybe save money on makeup because the other funny fucking thing is half the time Cheryl's a puppet. And then half the time she's a person in makeup <laughs> and at no like two points are they do any of those things look remotely the same. So there's like maybe six times she's a puppet and a handful of times where she's a person in makeup and none of those times look like they it was the same deal, probably lending itself to how long it took to film this movie. But it was just so it was just funny as shit because they're just like. They're, like, slamming the door on her head, and it's just clearly this, like, stuffed puppet getting its head smashed in, and it looks like an old lady, and then, like, it comes up again, and it's just evil Cheryl with funky makeup, and I think it was funny as hell, Um, but yeah, so everyone just starts, slowly the girls just start getting possessed. Yeah. So I think Linda's asleep or something, or... Yeah, Linda's asleep, but Shelly... Shelly, like, 
well, I don't know, she's alive or whatever. Because Linda mm-hmm. got stabbed in the leg. Like, we can't leave because Linda's leg's all fucked yeah. up. Yeah. And we can't take the car because we can't get over the bridge. Mm-hmm. And so I think it was like Linda goes evil and then attacks them. Yeah. And like the first thing Sky does is like throw her over his head and her head just goes right in the fucking fire. And I was like, let's do this. <laughs> But then, of course, the movie, like, he pulls her out because, yeah. like, him and Ash are having these, like, we can't kill them yeah. kind of things, which I thought was pretty cool because it did kind of, I don't know, humanize it. Like, you're a bunch of teens. You don't understand what's going on. Yeah. Even though you listen to a recording that very clearly described this is what will happen yeah. if you dick around with this shit. And, like, the, like only, the only way to kill them is through decapitation yep, or and yeah, just cutting their limbs off. Yeah. yeah, you just start chopping them up. Yeah. And that's what Scotty does is he stabs her. They find this, like, yeah, skull Scotty's sword. Yeah, Scotty's like, we got to go for it. And Ash is the one that's kind of like, I can't do this. Like, but yeah, because what he does is he gets this. They find, like, with the book and the recording, they find a sword with, like, a skull pommel. Yeah. And, like... She goes at him with that. Scotty somehow gets behind her and stabs her with this sword, and she starts, like, spewing up. It was like, you know what it was like? It was like in Aliens when Bishop gets ripped in half yeah. by the Queen Alien, mm-hmm. and he's just like... Pfft. Yeah, and All it's this, like, like that white milky, goop. Yeah, yeah well, I was like, coming Ew. out. Yeah, that's what it was, which I was just like... Where's that coming from? First of all, why is that there? Did they all what drink a bunch on? of milk? Like, yeah, it was like this? dinner. Was dinner not beer or anything like that? that <laughs> you would expect these people to be drinking. It was like, oh, I'll have some milk and a light salad, please. Like that was dinner for them. What the fuck's happening? <laughs> but he stabs her and she starts. You think she's dead, and this is this is the theme in the movie: is you keep thinking people are dead, and then they're not dead. Yeah, they're just they just look more. I think Lynn is the only person that, they, yeah. Yeah, that like dies and is dead for a good yeah. chunk of the movie because Scotty's just at that point he's like, fuck this shit and yeah, just, starts just starts going at away, it. chops yeah. her head off, her arm he just like dismembers her and Ash is just in horror. And like, she's still wiggling around. I mean, like, she's still like jerking around, but it's like you can't do anything about yeah. this now. Like there's nothing you can do. Yeah, it was crazy. And it was just like I think it was what Scotty goes, I'm going to find a way out of here. And he goes out in the woods and the trees who at this point have like a higher kill count. I feel like than anybody else in this movie, get him. And Scotty comes in with like his bones and his arms sticking out of his skin and shit. Like he's fucked up when he comes back <laughs> to the cabin and he's just like, you got to kill him. And I think at this point, Shelly or Cheryl escapes and then, uh, I, Linda or whoever whoever is the girlfriend of Ash with the monocle she finally turns evil and she looks for anybody who also plays video games like us we've recently, recently been playing uh, replaying Bioshock the remastered yeah. versions on the PS4 and like she straight up looks like one of those like splicers from Bioshock when she goes at uh, Ash I think I think it's Linda who looks like that like, she goes at him, and I'm like, she looks mm-hmm. like one of those crazy, like, screaming people from fucking Bioshock. Yeah. And Ash is, like, losing it because it's this whole thing mm-hmm. where they're faking being back, and then they're not, and he's losing his mind. He knocks out Linda. I think he gets that, like, chainsaw, and he goes to, like, cut her arms off and shit, and he just can't bring himself to do it, which I think is a loose fucking thread. They should have brought it back at the end of this movie and he should have just lost his mind and started chainsawing the shit out of everybody. Yeah. Because that would have been cool as fuck. But yeah, so you get this whole long... It's just, the, the bulk of this movie is just now Scott's dead. It's up to Ash to figure out how to stop these guys and them trying to kill Ash. And it's just bloody, gory, nothing. It's, it's, it's crazy what you end up with in this movie. You get a really, another really cool shot I liked was that projector when the blood's dripping out of everything. Oh, yeah. And like it drips on the projector that's projecting just light. Yeah. And it like, the, you get kind of this James Bond sort of running of yeah. the blood. I was like, man, that's so cool. Um, by the end of the movie, everybody's a monster. They're all trying to kill Ash. Yep. Uh, Ash uses the monocle necklace he got because yeah, they to reflect yeah. uh, light onto. No, he uses it. As, this is the, even the dumber thing because that would that's what I thought was gonna happen. Yeah. I was like, oh, I guess he'll like somehow reflect. But light. no, it's just used to grab it. Yeah, he uses like a hook to pull the book. But some of the fire did get on the. Yeah, because he yeah. sees the book kind of catch on fire a little bit, yeah. like surprise the books back in the movie, and he's like, oh, I got it. The book's the whole cause. If I burn the book. 
this all goes this away. This goes away, yeah. yeah. And so, like, there's a really long sequence of him, like, throwing this monocle and pulling it back and throwing this monocle and pulling yeah, it back. Yeah, well, oh, well, he's you've getting got, stabbed yeah. in the ankle or something. He's getting bit in the ankle. Oh, what a, yeah. hey, he's getting, like, eaten up. And then the other girl is just whacking him with this uh, rod. Oh, yeah, she picks up... This is the other thing. She picks up the fire poker. Yeah. And I'm thinking, like, I don't know, you, you've seen a fire poker, right? Yeah. You have, like, a little hook on the yeah. end. I was expecting her to, like, stab him with yeah, it. Yeah, but no, she's just She's just hitting him. Yeah. And I'm like, it would have made more sense if you just made him get the book faster yeah. before she hits him and then he chucks so what he ultimately does he chucks the book in the fire the book burns up and the book do you miss this because you blinked and i was so upset <laughs> everything goes into this like claymation type thing like stop motion oh, deal. yeah and everyone's like ah and they're all falling apart and they're turning in so like first off the best one no i did not i saw that and you it didn't was see disgusting. the book you didn't see the book because the book's oh, face yeah. all of a sudden becomes animated and he goes blah, 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 and like licks his lips and then just dies and is just gone. Yikes. I'm glad I didn't see that. That it part. It was funny as hell. When we got to that part, it just grossed me out with like the... The grits coming out of his face. Yes. <laughs> that grossed yeah, me Scotty, out so Scotty much. Yeah, Scotty's monster, monster Scotty dies and it's like in order to show his weird like disintegration, it looks like they push a good helping of grits like out of <laughs> the sleeve of a flannel shirt like toothpaste and I was like <laughs> you, a- Amber was just like ew it's so gross and I was like are those grits? <laughs> I was like it would have been one thing if they had like dyed them red or yeah. something but no it's just like you probably could eat those and you'd be fine and then a bunch of like cockroaches, snakes. Like, oh yeah all these horrible monster creepy crawlies are coming out and doing it's things. It's like uh, the Nightmare Before Christmas with Oogie Boogie and when, you know, the yarn comes off and he's just, Oh, yeah, it is like it that. Is. You're yeah. right. Yeah. Yeah, no, that was, I mean, it was just like such a gross. And then, of course, and this is where I'm like, I don't think they were thinking of a sequel because the movie ends where it's daytime again and Ash goes outside. He's standing at the front door. And this is another cool shot is you get like a tracking shot through the house. It's kind of sped up. Yeah. And then he comes zooming out the front door and he's like, ah. And it gets them in yeah. hard cut end of the movie. It's playing like some vinyl record. They or found. does it? Or does it? <laughs> and that's where I'm kind of like, it'd be so great if like the opening of Evil Dead Two, which we'll talk about when we record the opening for Evil Dead Two. But I'm hoping, I'm just hoping he like whips, like it's it's coming right at him, and he just like pulls the shotgun and just blasts whatever the <laughs> fuck it is and splatters it on yeah. the wall of the fucking cabin. That'd be amazing. But yeah, no, that's how the movie ends. And it, it, it was, I guess I would say I expected it, but I didn't expect it to go the way it did. Same. Like I definitely expected the level of camp in this movie for sure. Mm-hmm. I liked how, especially in the beginning, it kind of teased a little bit of like a humorous scary movie. Yeah. Like it was like, oh, th- we know that this is kind of funny. So like, let's let it be kind of funny. But at the same time, over the top gory and just, it was just a romp. Like, if you just like watching violent horror movies, like, this, I cannot say enough, is like a pinnacle of those. Turns out, though, that they actually, when they were filming in the cabin, according to IMDb, the most accessible movie database for trivia and for liars, um, (laughs) (laughs) so take this all with a grain of salt, the cabin was used to film, was the film set... But it was also where, like, the 13 crew members lived during filming. Oh. Apparently it was that bad. Like, most people were sleeping in the same room. The conditions, like, allegedly were terrible. Yeah. Uh, everyone fought all the time. The cabin didn't have plumbing. Some of the actors went days without showering. The actors. So think about when you see, like, Bruce Campbell getting covered in copious amounts of that corn syrupy blood shit. Yeah. Days without getting that shit off yeah uh a lot of them were like got sick because it was freezing cold and by the end of production they were burning furniture to stay warm oh allegedly this is what they say allegedly so i mean it could have been could have been not oh my gosh the other thing is this i guess they don't really tell you where this movie takes place Mm -hmm. but the movie was filmed outside of morristown tennessee so any listeners from tennessee if you know where morristown is it sounds like it's in the middle of nowhere go hunting for the (laughs) remains of this cabin according to bruce campbell's biography he said the cabin was burned down um so it turned out that like the cast and crew had put uh, they put allegedly put a uh, time capsule 
under the fireplace. Mm-hmm. Nobody knows exactly what happened. Apparently, Sam Raimi has been on the record saying he burnt it down himself after they filmed it, which seems really weird, but whatever. Yeah. And no one will actually tell you where the cabin is because apparently a lot. the only thing that remains is the brick chimney. The rest of the cabin's been destroyed. Okay. And way too many people have vandalized the property as it is. So oh, I guess okay. people maybe after this movie within the last like 30 years were like, oh, I'm going to dick around in this cabin and... Oh, I should say 40 years. Fuck. This movie's almost exactly 40 years old. It came out in 1981. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, really. So, you know, people are dicking around, so nobody will tell you where it is. But apparently that cabin was destroyed, perhaps, by Sam Raimi himself, question mark? Some cool shit. I mean, like, that. that there's some interesting trivia. Obviously, this movie uh, has did well enough for people to go make two more and then a television show. <laughs> um, and then I think they remade this movie in, like, 2009 or something yeah. like that. I never saw it, but I heard it was, like, it wasn't campy. It was it was kind of like, you remember how when we watched, like, Friday the, thir- the new Friday the 13th? Yeah. How, like, that movie, for anyone listening who's seen it, it's it takes itself way more seriously than it needs to. Yeah. Again, it's like Saw. It's, it's that, you know aughts movie apparently evil the remake of evil dead did the same thing and it just resulted in like people going like this is just a way too serious version of a movie that otherwise shouldn't be serious at yeah all. <laughs> i mean that was that you have any guess what the budget actually was for this movie i guess like 10 million 10 million yeah the budget for, for this movie was three hundred and fifty thousand dollars. <laughs> oh which it shows I mean yeah, it shows so you're true. renting a cabin for like a, a couple weeks and then you're filming on and off I mean and you have mm-hmm. one camera this movie was filmed with clearly one camera yeah no you're right actually given like the all of the like the setup and everything oh yeah because I wasn't that much well I mean like as a much as I like no radio yeah I mean <laughs> as much as I like the camera work in this movie I'm now realizing there was only one you yeah. never have like multiple angles of the same nope. shot you just have different shots do you want to guess how much this movie made? Probably made a hundred million. Don't know. Wow. <laughs> no, Is that no. Too much. Okay. It made uh, in the U.S. alone. It made two million four hundred thousand okay. dollars. So a movie with like a three hundred fifty thousand dollar budget. Yeah. That's um. That's you're making the same. You're making your money back hand over yeah. fist. I'm sure movies like have you ever seen Blair Witch Project. No, I haven't, but I've heard of it. Yeah, everyone has. I bet you that one had an even smaller <laughs> no, budget never, and probably yeah. that. Um, and it, because it was a huge, I remember that being a huge thing when I was growing up. It was mm-hmm. like, oh my God, Blair Witch is so scary. And then I saw it and I was like, that movie sucks. Yeah, um. <laughs> and they have a game. Um, they have a game for the Blair yeah, Witch Yeah, that they just came out. Oh, yeah. Geez, okay. A Blair Witch. <laughs> Whatever. That movie was <laughs> trash, probably because it, it's kind of like when we watched, uh, it's like when we watched 28 Days Later. Okay. That was like, everything's, you know, aped it yeah since then so mm-hmm. it's just not it doesn't seem original even though when it came out it was original as hell i feel like blair Witch project had the same problem okay you get like your cloverfields and your copious found footage bullshit movies and oh, it's just like okay blair Witch did it first and it was good well for its time and now it's just like you watch it later and you're just like this is a really bad version of those and it's like well no those are just other versions of that but yeah i mean this movie i, I don't know like what what did you think of this movie? What are your opinions and thoughts on this movie? Because I remember when we watched it, you were like, e- like that ending scene, you were, you were, <laughs> you were groaning, and then when it stopped, you kind of, your tune started to change a little bit. But I thought it was actually pretty good, like compared to a lot of other horror movies. Um, just the fact that they had like a single camera and everything was kind of shot like in one area which was the cabin that is kind of cool it's yeah like a, i didn't think about like how yeah it's all and they just set. merely focused on the plot like we didn't even care about you know the characters who they were why they were the t- together like anything like that um we just got straight into it um the only gripes i guess i had about it was just like uh, it was gross at times like i was just <laughs> like oh i know this is like big blood and shit but it's still like yeah. Yeah, I can't Ooh. get over that. <laughs> I was I was I was loving the blood. I mean I I thought this movie was just delightfully morbid. Um and it maybe didn't have to be, but it just was. And yeah. I think I like you said, I liked how we didn't I mean, I wish we spent a little bit more time on the characters just to sort of flesh out kind of who everyone is and what is their dynamic because mm-hmm. it's like clear, okay, it's a bunch of friends. But then I'm also like, you need at least one more person to be there with Cheryl, like another friend or her yeah. boyfriend or something. Like you need, or you just need the four people going out because it just became an odd number. Like why is Cheryl going, who's going with their couple friends? Who's going to fifth wheel over the weekend at a cabin? Yeah. 
you know, while they all get it on, clearly. It's just kind of like, it just doesn't seem like something most people would do. But yeah, I think aside from that, I like this movie. Like, it, it was it was over the top. It was campy as fuck. I both like and, you know, like, I like that it was shot on one camera. I like the shots that they were doing with that camera. I wish they had a bigger budget to do them a little yeah. bit better because I think it would have looked really fucking cool. But at the same time, I think that the camera, like the quality of production is definitely like it lends itself to the campiness of the movie. Like I think this movie wouldn't have felt the same. And I think it would have felt like this movie's trying not to take itself too seriously, but it's coming off too serious. And it's like, I don't know what's going on anymore. And this was just like, this movie's cheap as shit and we're making this thing and it's crazy as hell. I also love the runtime, a clean like 85, 90 minutes is exactly how long this movie should be. I know we said at the top of the episode, it's just like movies today are so fucking long. Could you imagine this movie like today in 2020? It would be long as shit. Yeah. I mean, it would be like two hours, no matter how campy they want it to be. <laughs> and it's like, I don't need two hours of this. There yeah. was barely enough content in this movie to make the 90 minute mark, for Christ's <laughs> sake. But yeah, a lot of it, I, I think this movie is definitely like a good watch. If anyone gets a chance, I mean, I think it's on Netflix right now. That's how we watched it. So it's enjoyable. Uh, what do you think this movie's rating as of right now on IMDb is, Amber? I think it's probably a 9 out of 10. 9 out of 10. It's actually 7.5. Okay. Which I guess I could get if people... Yeah, I no, think there's I just threw that people, out because, uh, you know, it seemed like a lot of people liked it. Well, I think it's that cult, it's got that cult following, you know, like a lot of yeah. movies do. And I think as a result, it's kind of like with any movie, especially in today's kind of climate where you have a lot of these spectacle movies and this movie isn't in and of itself sure it's a horror spectacle but i think you have people today who watch movies like this and they go oh the the special effects are so shitty and it's like this movie's from 1981 guys like it's not going to be a marvel Ooh, movie but on thing. rotten tomatoes it has a 95 percent. really like mm-hmm. audience score or critic score um critic score oh wow okay yeah i mean i think it's deserving of that what would you give it audience score was 84 but okay. yeah i mean i'd give it probably like an eight out of ten. Okay. Yeah. I think I'd go. I so think, that's kind of yeah. like with the audience score. Yeah. I think I'd go like eight point five, maybe nine, and only nine because there's so again, this is like a movie that so many people have aped since then that it's just like this is very clearly like something that really was like a touchstone in the pop culture world for horror movies, and it goes on from there. I mean, they made a TV show for crying out loud. Like, definitely was good enough for that. Yeah. Would you suggest people go watch this movie? Yeah, I definitely would. Definitely? Yeah, Yeah, same here. Especially if you're like, like right now we're kind of into like these horror films. Mm -hmm. And I think this is definitely like one of the ones that we've watched that is up there. I think it's definitely a go watch it, especially in, you know, when we're recording this, everyone's kind of on lockdown. So (laughs) yeah, you got the time. I mean, it's going to keep you interested. That's the thing. Yeah, and I think it's, it's one of those, like there's three of them. Just you can marathon these like we are right now. And you can have yourself a good time. At the same time, it's clearly a movie where it's like if you're into horror movies and you haven't seen this, are you really into horror movies kind of question yeah. gets raised. And I mean, just do yourself a favor and go watch it. If you like horror movies, you'll like this. I mean, yeah. it's not like a midsummer high horror get out kind of type thing, but yeah. it's... And it's not, it's it's not like um, Saw or anything like that either. No, it's I mean, it's its own campy. I think like on a, if you had a historical timeline of these movies, clearly like... This is a point on that yep. line. And you are definitely seeing like, oh yeah, this is where this trope came from and this thing came from. You have a whole Cabin in the Woods scenario. You have a movie called Cabin in the Woods, for Christ's <laughs> sake. I mean, you have all these kinds of things. And I feel like this movie does those. I don't know if it invented those, but it definitely does them well. And it does them well enough for it to really just keep up with itself. So I would definitely say, go watch this movie. So since this is our first marathon of a series, before we really dive into our next episode here in a minute, what uh, what do you think is the most, uh, what are you anticipating the second one? Not what is it about, we'll obviously get to that, but like, what are some maybe thoughts of how this could start in a second movie? I think second one's going to take place like 20 years later. Oh shit, okay. Or something like yeah. that. I wish it was a continuation of like Ash, mm-hmm. but I don't think it will be. I think yeah. it's going to be like a different group of kids and it's kind of going to be the same thing again. Yeah. Maybe we'll have a cameo from Bruce Campbell. Yeah. Um, kind of like 
as like a garner or some shit. Mm. But <laughs> I think it's just going to yeah. be like a uh, a different version. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know how the Evil Dead 2 did. I don't know what happened with it. Yeah. I Like I said at the top of the episode, I remember the third one. I remember seeing it. I like remember how it started, and then yeah. that's kind of it. So I think personally Bruce Campbell will be in the second one. But what happens in it, I don't know. I kind of think it's going to be like what you said. It's like a rehash. Like I think it's going to be more like he comes in the middle of these other teenagers doing what happened and he's like, I'm going to help you stop this yeah. thing. Like, um, I'm a professional or something yeah, like that. Yeah, I'm a professional. Yeah. Just some, some shit, but I think it's definitely going to be like 10 times as campy as the first one. Yeah, definitely. Um, I think we're going to double down on it and we're just going to ride that wave to a third movie. And I think that's what we're going to expect. But if you want to hear more of our thoughts on The Evil Dead 2 and our thoughts and first impressions after we watch it, check out next week's episode, The Evil Dead 2. <laughs> <laughs> but, as always, I am your host, Thomas. I'm Amber. And this was So What Happens Next. We'll see you on the next Evil Dead 2.